Yes, 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 yes. Is that even live? No. Okay. This is on you guys. It's live. It's live right now. Oh, there's Troy. Hold on. I gotta get on. I gotta get mine. I gotta get mine going. Let me tell Troy, hey. Okay, let me put my volume down. He said, I hear you. He can hear us. That's All Troy. All right. Got our sound man going. Got our tech people back there. Got those people in front of me that I ain't read. Ooh. I'm going to let Scott do this one. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. 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 Thank you so much for being here. I can't hear. He said he can't hear the something mics. I it's on here. It says it's on. Okay, you guys talk. Yeah. Oops. Only hear camera mic. Is that better? Huh? Is that better? It wasn't plugged in all the way. Ah, okay. Okay. How about now, Troy? Is that better? Yep, it's good. Yep. All right. Okay. So, pray drive. Pray drive. PR. E-Y, not A-Y, okay? Prey drive. Got that. Go with it, buddy. So dogs have evolved away from bringing predators the same way wolves are. They've driven away from that. Most have retained the ability and desire to hunt. Thanks to breeding, this drive to hunt manifests itself in different ways in different breeds. Okay. Prey drive involves five different behaviors. Wait, wait. I, oh. want, I, want, I, want, I want to stop one thing right here. You said an important word. I want uh, for people... As we go through this, prey drive manifests itself. Is that the word you use? Manifests manifest? itself in different ways in different breeds. Okay, now pick up where you left off, but don't forget that manifest Manif statement. Manifestations. Okay. Prey drives involve five different behaviors. Searching. Eye stalking. Chasing. Biting to grab. And biting to kill. Among the dogs with high prey drives, these behaviors manifest differently according to the breed. Okay. You know, basically, herding breeds have a strong chase instinct, while hounds like to stalk and flush out prey. Terriers bred to hunt and kill small rodents and other small games still possess and express a strong drive to do so. Not all dogs have strong prey drive. Many dogs are content expressing whatever mild predatory instincts remain through play, such as chasing a ball or shaking a stuffing out of a toy. Okay, well, there's our basic foundation. Yes. And I'm gonna pick and choose a little bit of that. One of the things that, that when I said manifest, dogs manifest in different ways is because there's this belief that some dogs don't have prey drive and some dogs have high prey drive and some dogs have low prey drive, some dogs have no prey drive. I like that this said that manifests itself in different ways. Also, the biting thing that it talks about, there's grabbing and there's biting. Those are both factors of mm -hmm. the various drives. So here, let me go back and put it to the biological, first the history of where I learned about prey and defense drive. But first, let's figure out what the heck a drive is, because 
if you pull 100 dog trainers in this country, you're going to come up with 100 different answers. And some of you in some other podcasts may have heard me say this, but we first started using drives to train dogs that I knew of in the 70s when the German trainers came over here with Schutzen. Mm -hmm. Before that, all we knew about was, you know, tie the dog up short and torment that sucker till he bit something, pretty much. Mr. Kohler refined it a great deal mm -hmm. by changing it and making it, uh, by triggering a dog's natural, natural uh, tendency to defend his, his own pack or territory. And he does what? He calls them what, Scott? The, the guy who does the, he said, the requisite for training a good guard dog is you have to be a what? You read the book. I don't remember. You have to be a good actor. Good actor. I'm not, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he refined it a great deal from the basics. And then the, when, when the German Schutzen system came over with the prey and defense drive, we really got scientific. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, in trying to figure out how to explain drives to everybody, I went back to the source of the term, which is it's a, it's a psychological condition. It's a scientific, or excuse me, biological condition like you talking about the wolves and their prey drive and the... So if you go into biology, or I guess, oh, I don't know if it's biology or psychology, but there's three, a drive, well, first let's define a drive. Simplest way you can define it. A drive is an involuntary response to a specific stimulus, okay? Mm -hmm. So it, if a drive is triggered you respond physically in some manner for that particular stimulus, but not the same way for another stimulus. Example, if, if Scott were to see Britney Spears come strutting in here in a half-piece bikini, more than likely, Carol Ann, don't listen to this part. More than likely, there would be a involuntary response, physical response, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, so we have a specific stimulus and an involuntary response. Now, if, if Scott, think about this one closely, if through that door walks a 300 pound gorilla wearing the same bikini outfit as Brittany, you would not have that response at all, would you? No, it'd be total. You'd have a totally, totally different, different response, response, right? Yes, I would. So, so on that one, the hair on the back of your neck would probably be rising up, right? Yes. Whereas in the other one with Brittany, something else would be rising up, right? Could be. Okay, so what you just saw is an example of prey and defense. <laughs> yeah, bad. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In the prey drive, you want to go chase and grab something. In the defense drive, you want to get away before something chases and grabs you. The monkey might be some strong aggression there. There you go. There you go. Distance. <laughs> Instance. Dis distance between. So we'll, so we'll touch on that later. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the, real, the real differences. By the way, the third drive that's recognized scientifically is sex drive. And the one thing that all drives have in common, defense, prey, or sex, is they contribute to the uh, the, the procreation or the sus the procreation or sustenance of the species. Good so job. it has to be a direct effect on the survival of the species to be considered a drive. So going back to wolves, would that also occur to having to eat every day, prey drive to eat, yeah. to hunt? To yeah, eat? yeah. They have to. That's that's what pre that's what that's what prey drive contributes mm -hmm. to the survival of the species. Mm -hmm. So there's many factors in that survival. Exactly. Procreation, eating, nurturing, depending your pack. Defending your pack. Yep. Defending your pack. So I heard an interesting comment uh, from uh, Rick Dunham, our head, head of our Western Shepherd pedi pedigree database. Uh, he was looking at different things and he said he ran across one of these websites for people that were selling uh, e executive protection dogs. and. Uh, <laughs> And he said that, you know, this particular trainer listed there that, you know, just because the dog's a working line dog, shepherd or Doberman or whatever, 
doesn't mean it'll protect you. In fact, they won't protect you unless they're trained. And of course, they have to be trained by this particular <laughs> salesman, you know. Um, that's totally false. You so, know? so, let's go back to that. It won't protect you. Yeah. So if they're not trained, prey drive versus strong aggression. Okay. People say, oh, dog's aggressive, he's aggressive. Mm -hmm. To me, aggressive, an aggressive dog is in a defensive state. A defensive, there you go. A defensive state. And his goal in a defensive state is to get as far away from what's bothering him as possible. Prey drive brings a dog as close as it can to go get that. Very good, nice difference, there you go. Yeah, so there's a difference between aggressive aggr dog aggression and prey drive. Right. So. And and what Scott's saying is exactly right. And pray, pray drive, and to mention in what he read earlier, there's a grab bite and there's a bite bite, you know, depending. And the, the grab and hold is, is prey drive. The bite and crush is defense. Mm. So prey drive may, means dogs have a natural inclination to chase something, balls, rabbits, whatever, yep. okay? They can't help it. Now, defense means that's so so let's go oh, let me back up a little bit we started training with prey and defense and it was the most difficult thing in the world for me and i know most dog trainers in america who want to do protection dogs or who wanted to compete in schutzen to understand that that godfrey dildai and, and the great german trainers of the day told us you have to you you're striving for a balance between prey and defense but they can only be in one drive at a time, so you have to balance, okay? You want the prey drive as strong as the defense drive. And, and that's an impossible concept for us to understand. How do you, if they got a, how do you, so over time in America, we came up with someone invented something called fight drive because they couldn't understand the balancing part, right? Well, there's another drive called fight drive. Well, no, there wasn't, but when they didn't understand the balancing part, they came up with this drive. And it was very popular through the late 90s and early 2000s. And then with that came another drive, and they trainers began to explain everything through a drive. Well, you'd always got to have ball drive, which is just prey drive. There's you know, another name for it. Yeah, manifest something that's moving away from him. You mm -hmm. know, and then no, he's got to have. No matter what the drive is called, it all boils down to the, like it's like a tree. You got to go back to the roots, and it's always going to go back to that same. There you first go. wolf had prey drive. Right. And from then everything the tree flourishes. Right. We got names for everything nowadays. Right. Maybe he likes balls more, so it's a ball drive or right. it's a tug drive. Right. But. Or, you know, if you if you got a search and rescue dog, he's got to have hunt drive. And I guess if you're doing search and rescue in a muddy place, he's got to have four wheel drive. I'm I don't know. You, right. you got to have all these drives. There's three drives. Period. And we train in prey drive mostly. And this is the difference between the sport dogs and the security dogs. Mm -hmm. We're using prey drive because what what trainers learned <clears throat> is they were trying to work more and more of these dogs was they didn't understand defense and in defense since you didn't understand it and you couldn't balance it and I'll explain how to balance it here in a minute since you couldn't balance it you avoided defense because in defense dogs have a choice mm -hmm. fight or flight if they choose the fight that's when they're going to get closer to the object like you just said mm -hmm. but they may choose fight which takes them away from the object and then as someone started bringing over more mouths who have the same prey drive as every other dog has they just have a different way for it to manifest. And that's that high energy, that craziness, the mouths would bite anything that moved. And so trainers said, okay, I'm a dog trainer. <laughs> Let me wiggle this in front of a Malinois and <laughs> I'm a dog trainer. Yep. And that's not it at all. That's a great sport dog, but it's not gonna make a great security dog. It's gonna protect you on the street. We'll, we'll go into that too. Um, the, 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 the gold standard is still a balance of prey and defense. Yes. Because, because, let's face it, on the street, if someone decides to, to rob you, they're not going to jump up and down and go, hey, give me your money. You know, they're going to be pretty quiet about it. They're just going to maybe point a knife or a gun at you and say, hand me your money. Right? 
Yes. So if your dog is strictly prey driven and prey oriented, he may or may not go for that guy. Here's another problem with training an all prey drive for, for real life situations. It's great for your sport, don't get me wrong, it's great. But on the streets, remember in defense you have two options, fight or flight. You've only trained your dog with prey drive. Lots of excitement, lots of whoop de doo lots of crazy stuff going on, and he goes and he bites and he loves it and he shit. Okay, now someone kicks in your door. Now he's got to think about it. Well, not only he's got to think about it, first he's startled, then there's these huge people who made a tremendous noise, and in prey drive, it was always fun and he always got to chase something, but now something's chasing him, and whatever's chasing him is bigger than he is, and it's bigger than his master is, and he has two choices, and he ain't being held by a leash, and your dog chooses flight. Mm. There you go. Game over. Yeah, game over. So, so this is why a security dog has to be trained in both. He has to have a balance of prey and defense. And what we're doing when we're training in the defense is teaching the dog to choose the fight option over flight. And don't get me wrong, 70% of the time, the, the prey drive, if they, if they got enough adrenaline pumping through them, which is what makes a Malinois be so crazy about going after stuff, they've been bred to have a pituitary that spits out adrenaline. <laughs> the minute they see movement. And they just get so excited that they literally, it's a driving, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a propelling drive. So they're going forward and gonna go get it. Unless something really big, boogeyman jumps up and goes boom. And if they're startled, now they can sit back on their haunches and go, hmm, best I check out. Yeah. So there's, our biggest. You got any more you want to throw in with this? Well, I, mean, I took oh, away from you there. No, I'm sorry. You, no, you didn't. No, we're good. All I had is the prey drive can be can lead to bad behavior, or can it is it good or is it bad? Strong prey drive. No, strong prey drive can be a problem if your dog mo chases anything that moves. That's fine if you're playing pass in the backyard or fish, but when you're on a walk, walking your dog, <laughs> anything that comes in his peripheral vision that moves, a cat. Squirrel or rabbit, he's taking off after it. That's a problem. Yeah, I never or, thought know, about that. You're right. You know that too, and you know it can also engage in behaviors like dangerous stuff, like chasing cars or the UPS man, or going after venomous snakes. You know, it's yeah. There's some negatives about it, but there are some positives also. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we're talking here and. What we do here, prey drive has a positive side, however. The term prey drive primarily refers to the dog's level of excitement or motivation to perform a task involving hunting related behaviors or going after an object. And this drive is very useful in training dogs for agility training, military, canine training, police canines, and personal protection. Yep, <clears throat> and that's a so, great summation. And you know, to, to, to actually just to end this little part of it here. Yeah. You know, dogs are happiest and most balanced in overall behavior when their prey drive is properly stimulated and satisfied through play. Many professional dog trainers use tugs, you know, as a tool in prey and drive and retrieving development. Basically, if, what I'm trying to say is if you have a high prey, dro high prey dog, high drive, you don't, take, you don't get a Mal or a Western Shepherd or dogs that require a lot of work. Don't bring him home and leave him in the house in a cage 10 hours a day and come home and expect him because they'll get bored and frustrated and tear up your house. You got to put in the work with him. You got to make sure play with him, play with him, get him tired, make him satisfied. Yeah. It takes a, lot, a little more work. So that's just my little two cents about, you know. And personal and your personal experience too. Yes. Yes. I mean, it takes just, oh, it's actually fun, but you got to know what kind of dog you're getting and Looking to the breeds, like you're saying, the breeds that they all have prey drive, but certain dogs apply it in different ways, like mal right. malinois. Right, right. You know, as opposed to a basset hound. You know, <laughs> what kind, you know. So, basically, it's really not, usually not the dog's fault. The dog just needs a lot more attention and more stimulation. Right. To make him happy. Right. He, that's how he's bred. Yeah, but it, it, and as a former basset hound owner and attempted basset hound trainer 
a tempting basset hound trainer <laughs> on several occasions. You know, the the, the male, the working the check sh shepherd is going to go go get something, and the, and the basset hound puts his nose to the ground and just mm -hmm. it's. But they're both being stimulated by the same hormones, which is how you tell which drive, I mean, scientifically, which drive is really working. So one wants to eat it, and the other one wants to spike it. Yeah. And locate it, it for yeah, you. That's yeah. his that's hound his dog. That's what yeah. hound dog is, is that's right, their drive. Right. To and flush game out, you know, or find, find search and rescue, or, you know. And, and that's how we use these hounds for their, you know, for their tracking mm -hmm. and finding lost people, that sort of thing. So it makes, <laughs> we're all laughing, we got a, <clears throat> We got a miniature dog trainer out there. Come on in, Miss Mina. We want to see our number, our number two agitator. For come here, Mina. Come over here, girl. This one's been out training some Western Shepherds, doing some some prey drive. Hang you, Mina. Is he biting? Is he biting when you tell him to? Can you make him better? All right, all right. So, so y'all check out our Facebook and watch this little girl in action here. This is, this is the shortest agitator decoy on record. I defy anyone to find a shorter one. And, and I, even I put that um, the um, sack on the um, green thing. On the and green? He, and he jumped up and he literally just ran up that and just got it out. Whoa. He pulled it down. She's talking about her dog, McCoy, a Western Shepherd, right? This one right now. What's the green thing he pulled down? What was it? Like the, the thing that's hooked on the tree with the nails. And then, and then I threw the sack over and I told McCoy, get it, and he ran up and got it. He's pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> what word did you use? The sack? Or did you say take him? Yeah, did you give him a command or did he just do it when he wanted to? What would you tell him? Say, alert, take him, what'd you tell him? Take him. Take him, take that's him. What, that's what you were saying out there, I could hear you. Yeah, we heard you. Yeah. All so right. Your dad started to go over and bite the sack himself, but then McCoy beat him to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when we're talking about security and sport dogs, again, sport dogs, gonna, he's not gonna be put in a situation where there's gonna be extreme stress. You can go join your mom if you want to. I mean, or us, pull up a chair, girl. So you were saying uh, how to find that balance. How do you get that balance between defense and oh, straight drive? Oh, yeah, great. So here, here. Excuse me. Yeah. Just really quick. Yeah. Um, I have a young lady that said, "Hello, Mr. Mina. Um, I have a question. Said what? She, her name is Glue Guns and Roses. She said, "So glad I found, I caught y'all live." Found y'all via Google, looking for German Shepherds in my area. Are you still breeding and selling the Western Shepherd puppies? Are we still selling Western Shepherd puppies? Whoa, yes, sir. Is the world spinning left to right? Of course we are. Yep, he's right. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Absolutely, yeah. We yes. we will always. That's that's. We hope someday to let every person who wants a good working dog be looking for a Western Shepherd. So we're constantly trying to expand our, our program and we definitely are doing that. We also have adult uh, Western Shepherds for sale from time to time trained. We'll be having more of those. So give me a call tomorrow. My phone number's on the webpage. Give me a shout. So. Yep, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. I get your own team. Yeah. And let me, I'm gonna explain balance and we're gonna let everybody, you know, give them a break from my yakking. But here's what it took me and, and, you know, I, I talk about other people don't know really what they're talking about with drives. And let me be clear. I spent 12, 14 years walking around thinking, I got it. I know, I know I'm balancing this with that and it's working and I'm really good and I'm a shits and dog trainer and all this stuff. You know, and then, then I got, had the opportunity to go uh, to some seminars put on by an American who had taken North America by storm uh, with his training abilities, we got a gentleman named Doug Deacon out of Canada. And Mr. Deacon, after I forget 10, 12, 14 years, I was mostly a, a helper, they called it, for all, for Schutzen and Clubs and Amarillo, Albuquerque, Lubbock, all around mm -hmm. like that. And uh, Mr. Deacon 
told me what a balanced dog was. <laughs> And I wasn't even close. Uh, you know, I, I was a good bluff. You know, I was getting by, and we all, since none of us understood what we were doing, looked like it was working. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Deacon is out of Canada, by the way. He also is one of the top police dog trainers in Canada. So he, the man's done, he's just world class. And so here's my interpretation of what I learned by listening to Mr. Deacon. We're talking about balance. You can only you can be in prey drive or you can be in defense. There's two different sets of hormones that kick in that make your body react the way they react. You got certain hormones that make you react when you see Britney Spears, and you got other hormones that suddenly kick in when that 300 pound gorilla comes into place. Hello, McCoy. So you can't be in both drives at the same time. But what you do is this. What Scott said earlier about there's two forms of bites, let's take that as an example. When, when a, a wolf or a dingo chases a rabbit, they'll reach and grab him, and they'll grab it really full of the back of their mouth. They'll bite down, kill it, and then they'll carry it back to the den. If a grizzly bear comes up to the den and tries to, you know, go in then that same dingo, well, there's dingoes in Australia and grizzly bears in America. I don't know how it happened, but let's <laughs> Boat. let's lay yeah, out. Use your imagination, folks. Uh, if that if a grizzly bear goes up to that den and tries to go in there, now the dog's in fear for its life, its pack, its territory. It's got to defend it. It's going to go, and the defensive bite is just going to be with its front teeth, its fangs. But it's going to be a hard like hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to hurt this thing and scare it off. But he's only going to engage the front of his teeth because he also realizes that big old grizzly bear can reach down and swat him. So he has to be able to release and get away really quickly. So if you train your dog in prey drive, he's going to have that envied, what everybody wants, full, full mouth bite. If you train him in defense, it won't be full, but it'll be really hard, which will stop anybody. Yep. But if you train him, it's just, think of it, I compare a lot to martial arts because that's what I do. And also we, we use canine martial arts as mm -hmm. to describe our training. So if you go to the gym and you, you don't even have to go to a gym. If you just sit up every day and shadow box and you throw a dry, throw a jab and throw a jab and throw a jab and throw a jab, and you do that for, you know, 50, 100 times, and then all of a sudden you get out on the street, and you're going home one night, and you walk through a dark alley and someone jumps out and yells at you, hey, give me your money, and it scares you, you will automatically, boom, pop off a perfect jab, right? That's just like, when we're practicing our dogs on biting a sleeve, biting a sack, all in prey drive, all in prey drive, but then all of a sudden it's a life threatening or pack threatening or territory threatening situation. And when you throw that jab, you're going to have all the power of defense. Now you could also turn and run, but we're assuming that just like we train our security dogs, mm -hmm. We've trained them, we've used prey drive to build their confidence, to teach them the routine, mm -hmm. but then we start in, uh, uh, showing them a little threat, a little stress, a little competition, until when they bite, their, their defense hormones are slowly kicking in, slowly kicking in, but they're always biting, so they're always choosing the fight over the flight. Now this is a dog that if someone kicks in your doors and all of a sudden the hormones for defense kick in, this dog is not going to choose the flight because he has trained so many times, boom, boom, to choose the fight. And there's where you have the balance. It's not that they're in both drives at the same time. It's just you've built up repetitions to make their muscle memory react in a certain way, just like a fighter. Mm -hmm. And, it works, and the, the, the bites work on both. Yes. Uh, offense 
I can call it offense. I'm going to call it offense. That's good. Or defense. Right. You know, right. if you send a dog to somebody, and the dog someone's coming in, exactly. the dog's still going to go. It's exactly. not going to, no right. distance. It's going to close the distance, not make distance. Right. And you have the same, like a mus muscle memory, have the same reaction. The same, right. uh, same, god dang it. The same reaction. The same, same reaction, but the same end result. result. End result. Forget about everybody. it. There everybody. we go. Right, right, I got right. Tied up there, didn't I? Right, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I was thinking so, too hard. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that ain't ever happened. Smoking on my ear here a little bit. <laughs> so, so that's <laughs> that's where that's where again, we've we've taught them to always bite full, always bite full. So it's always the back of the jaws, always the back of the jaws, always back. But now we've also with muscle memory taught them. When something is really scary, the hormones for defense kick in, and the option is never flight. It's always fight. fight. And it's full, and it's really hard like, yes, ma'am. Linda Snyder asked a question. So training builds muscle memory for fight? For fight? For fight, when you train. Yeah, exactly. Yes. For situation. And, and this, remember how you train. As you train, so shall, so shall you fight. Thank you, Thomas Raven and all the, the Danish military boys. That's their mantra. As you train, so shall you fight. So in your training, if you train for just whoop de doo fun prey drive bites, your dog's going to meet a situation with a whoop de doo prey uh, attitude. So as you train, so shall you fight. Don't ever forget that. If you're training a security dog, Get it serious. And serious doesn't mean scenario training. Serious means changing the drive that the dog is fighting in. As the early shits and trainers, when, they, when we were, when I first was introduced to it, do. They do in their courage test. You send the dog, he's all in prey drive, he hits. And then they would come back with, back then they did stick hits and they hit. And they did that to change the dog from prey to defense to see which choice he'd make were it fight or were it flight so yes you're gonna as you train so shall you fight train your dog properly with some competition introduce some stress and defense and you're gonna have an all-around trustworthy security dog you said, a, you said a big thing there stress mm -hmm. you train your dogs to come go ahead and like you're saying we do and have fun and they don't put no apply no stress and you'll never know yeah you need to have stress that's right that's right. Cause just to see. I mean, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, we, we started a little late here, but we got started. I think mm -hmm. we're going to get finished pretty good. So mm -hmm. uh, th this is this is a topic that's uh, every dog trainer, whether it's agility or protection training, they talk about drives. Like Scott said, using a tug to train for agility and this sort of thing. So this is this is a major training factor for advanced dog training. But it's still very, I believe, misunderstood. And and I think if you really delve into this, whoops, we'll get one more question, then we'll delve into this. Yeah. <laughs> Who we got? Does it matter if a guard dog or protection dogs are mainly indoor dogs? It doesn't. I have two of them. I've been bit indoors and I've been bit out, outdoors and it hurt both times either way. <laughs> so <laughs> even, if, even but on that note, indoor dogs still need to be socialized. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. The confidence. It's, right. Where they're doing their work is irrelevant. Yeah. <coughs> Whoa, McCoy's got a problem. Oh, uh, his dew claw. Oh. So. She touched it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, anyway, folks, we're going to leave you all for the evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll jump back next week. If everyone's got any questions, remember, please send them to us. Let us know. We'll probably get a few more dog training, I mean, uh, protection training, security dog stuff up next week after mm -hmm. we're done with this one. Absolutely. So. Let us know. We'll uh, talk to y'all next week. We'll talk to y'all next week. Thank you, folks. Thank you. We're out. <laughs>